This video has the following structure. The aims and objectives are to design a pavilion, to properly pick and choose eco-friendly materials, to incorporate passive techniques, to have a life cycle assessment, and to run the pavilion design through simulation softwares. We start off with the city of Salford, Manchester, the United Kingdom. Covering an area of approximately 21 square kilometers, the town of Salford is considered part of the city of Salford. It is situated towards the west of the city center of Manchester, United Kingdom, approximately 1.6 kilometers away and is partially mandered by the River Irwell. Having a populace of about 103,000, the town of Salford is known to be a pioneer in numerous innovations. It is home to the world's first public library and the first gaslit street. The site chosen is located at the Crescent Meadow, an open green field mandered by a narrow water body, the River Irwell, neighboring the University of Salford and Peel Park towards the west, and the Salford Cathedral towards the east. Moving forward towards the climate analysis, we will start off with the wind speed in the city of Manchester. Manchester experiences the maximum wind speeds in the month of January and December, which are the winter months. The highest wind is received from the west direction and the majority of the wind is received from the southwest direction. The graph represents the annual precipitation scenario in Manchester. On an average, it rains around 15 days every month, that makes it 180 days of rain annually. Moving on to the sun path direction, we have shown the sun path during the months of January, April and August. Manchester is predominantly having an overcast cloud cover during the winter months and has partly cloudy conditions during the summer months. August has the highest dry bulb temperature of 28.7 degrees and a minimum of 21.1 degrees, while in January it has a maximum dry bulb temperature of 12.5 degrees and a minimum of 7.5 degrees. The location is proven to have a few attractions within a closed perimeter including River Irwell, Albert Park, Chatham's Library, the Manchester Cathedral, the Museum of Science and Technology, the David Lewis Sports Ground, the Salford University, and finally our site, the Meadow. Due to River Irwell acting as a barrier, accessibility to the Crescent Meadow has proven to be difficult. A few proposals have been set out to design and build two bridges on each side of the meadow. The only entry point is through a bridge projecting out of Peel Park. The most prominent sustainability assessment and certification process in the UK is BREEAM, short for Building Research Establishment Environmental Assessment. The concept for the pavilion was inspired from two phenomena. Shown is the section of a leaf. Stomata are found on underside of leaf surface. They open and close to regulate the amount of gas required for the process of photosynthesis. Secondly, the durian fruit. The skin is strong enough to protect the flesh from mechanical impacts. The pyramid shape of the fruit helps in accumulating heat at the same time preserving the seeds from overheating. Thus, the dynamic skin will withstand any mechanical impacts also help in accumulating heat during winters and shields the user from direct sunlight. The black color of the skin also helps in accumulating the heat. The initial idea was to design a curvilinear form with spikes embedded in it, allowing it to open and close based on the sun rays hitting on the surface of the pavilion. As the design developed, the existing water body was incorporated into the design 
making a space around it as a plaza and the pavilion roofs it. The final form takes an account of the wind which navigates using the wind wall and ventilates the plaza. Thus, in the design, the user have the flexibility to use inside the pavilion which leads to an observation deck for full panoramic view of the meadow as well as the plaza created below the pavilion. Next we see the mechanism for the pavilion. The inspiration for the pavilion was driven from the Albaha Towers located in Abu Dhabi which has a kinetic skin that depends on the sun path to reduce the solar gain on the building. The actual mechanism which we can see here is a linear actuator that when the actuator moves away from the center of the spike in the downward direction represents the open thigh position and when the actuator moves towards the center of the spike in the upward direction represents the closed position. Here we see the spike in action for the pavilion. The performance of the pavilion was analyzed by the help of IES software over various different fields. The design times for running the simulations were derived by studying the sun path in which we have the timings for the month of August as 7 am, 12 pm and 4 pm. For the month of April as 7 am, 12 pm and 4 pm and lastly for the month of January as 9 am, 12 pm and 3 pm. The dynamic movement of the pavilion was determined by analyzing the sun exposure on the different parts of the pavilion at various design times, wherein the spikes were in the closed position in those parts of the pavilion that had the direct sun exposure and the spikes were considered open which had no direct sun exposure. This gave us a total of 5 movements for the pavilion to be compared with the base case. For example, the base case at 7 am was compared with the movement 1 at 7 am and so on with the different movements. A solar analysis performed for the pavilion gave the results in which the pavilion proved to be a better contender than the base case where all the design times had a reduction in solar gain with respect to their associated movements. The air temperature of the pavilion was recorded during the discrete movements and was compared to the adaptive comfort standard of ASHRAE 55. This method provides formulae to generate the optimum comfortable temperature, 80% acceptability temperatures and 90% acceptability temperatures. Here it was done for the three design months, where the wider range of 80% acceptability limits and optimum temperature were analyzed for each month, and it proved that two design months were not thermally comfortable and one of the design months was thermally comfortable. To solve this issue, we have incorporated the following solution. 1. The black color for the dynamic spike for high absorption of solar heat, radiant flow heating system which can be powered by wind trees. It produces 2400 kWh per annum, works with wind even at 2 meter per second. It produces electricity irrespective of the wind direction. It is 11 meter tall and operates silently with noise level less than 5 dB. On customization, it gives additional benefits such as wind breaker. Also it acts as channelizing the wind to ventilate the plaza. The daylight potential for the pavilion was analyzed based on three platforms that is the illuminance contours, luminance contours and the daylight factor at two locations in the pavilion. The daylight simulation days were taken as June 21, December 21 and September 21 with the following timings. The illuminance contours at the two locations for all the three seasons gave better results for the movements as compared to the base case where the illuminance levels were reduced from 950 lux to a range of 300 to 500 lux which is considered as a comfortable range as per the SIPC lighting guide. The luminance contours were studied to analyze the glare potential and it was found that no scenarios had glare issues. It is observed that there was substantial reduction in the daylight factor for the associate movements 
as compared to the base case, mostly ranging between a range of 2% to 5%. Internal velocities for most of the scenarios of the pavilion were in the range of 0.3 meters per second to 0.1 meters per second, that is in close proximity to the requirement of ASHRAE 55, which is 0.2 meters per second. With the help of the external ventilation analysis, it was observed that the base case had to experience winds at high pressure and higher velocities. In order to minimize this negative effect and reduce the impact of the cold winter winds on the pavilion occupants, a passive strategy was adopted by placing trees in the incoming wind direction, which is the southwest direction. Therefore, a substantial decrease in the velocity and the pressure levels was observed, whilst ensuring a better circulation in the plaza area. The life cycle assessment tool is used for informing decision makers about environmental performance of their industries and identifying cost saving techniques. Is mainly divided into four different stages goal definition, inventory analysis or choosing materials, rating of the environmental impact, and analysis of results. We have used one click LCA, an online tool, to calculate the environmental performance of our pavilion. It has asked us to input the quantities of the materials being used in our pavilion, which are as follows. According to our pavilion components and amounts of materials used, these were the results we have concluded. These are the sources of materials we have used. The table of results which shows the environmental impacts of the construction, the transportation of material to the site, all the way to the deconstruction of the structure. It is evident that the most contributing elements and material types for the global warming potential, which has emitted 74 tons of CO2, are the vertical structures, which are divided into the main steel structure of the pavilion and the structural concrete columns holding the pavilion up. Following that, the steel structure contributed to the most percentage of non-hazardous waste disposed. According to the results achieved, the LCA tool provided us with the option of choosing sustainable alternatives to achieve better results and use more eco-friendly material. Shown are the architecture details for the pavilion. The pavilion is supported with three RCC columns. The location and details are as follows. The figure shows an axonometric view of the elements of the pavilion with their materials.
in conclusion the pavilion is a strong candidate to get 8 brium credits that is one credit for natural ventilation six credits for the lc analysis and one credit for the outside space